Hello everybody. Welcome to this talk, European Social Work. This is kind of like a part two video. We talked about comparative social work in another video. I'd like to continue some of those ideas thinking in the European context today. Inspiration for me is a bunch of books that I have on my bookshelf, books which I often dip into. These are four of my favourite books. Each one of them has the expression European social work or a variant of that, social work in Europe. What on earth do these books have as their topic? You know, what is social work in Europe? What are these books about? Natter with your partner, scratch your heads. What might we find inside these books? And I'll give you a clue. There's kind of two distinct meanings, two distinct meanings which don't really overlap. See if you can guess which. For me, the two particular meanings could be, well, we could investigate social work involving the institutions of the European Union or even the Council of Europe. So we could look at the institutional influence of Europe on our social work. For example, we have the social fund financing various social projects. You know, what kind of social work could be financed by that? Good. That's meaning number one. Meaning number two, another meaning, examining social work in Europe comparatively and identifying commonalities, but also differences. Now, it happens that this second meaning is the meaning that you'll find in those particular book covers. That's typically the central question which authors dealing with European social work are thinking about. Good, good. So comparative European social work often describing comparative perspectives within the continent of Europe. Why do you think the European countries are particularly the focus of comparisons? Why? Netta with your partner. What did you come up with? There's a whole bunch of reasons why when we're comparing, we especially like to do so within Europe itself. Firstly, of course, the shared context, you know, you've got a shared history, shared culture, shared, shared identity, you know, we're all Europeans. On the other hand, despite those shared things, we have exciting differences within our countries and within our social works. So that's an interesting uh, kind of starting point for these comparisons within Europe. Other reasons why we compare a lot, very high mobility levels, lots of people in Europe have lived in another European country, it's very easy to travel between them. Okay, I'm recording this in April 2020, it's not very easy this month, but by and large it is. And when I came to, to, to Germany 20 years ago, I was dazzled with the fact that the trains at my local train station would go through other European countries. You know, this train would go to, to the Netherlands, this train was headed for Switzerland. You know, so you can be on a train, you can cross for Orders, you know, people are speaking one language around you and suddenly the train will stop and more people will come in and they'll be speaking a different language. That's how Europe is, isn't it? So the ease of travel. Now, at the university, we've also got the Bologna Declaration, signed just over 20 years ago by our European education ministers, committing us to have more of a European dimension in our studies at the university. So, you know, I'm encouraged to talk about European questions when I'm teaching social work. And of course, that's a great pleasure and a great privilege. So the Bologna process is formally the motor for much of this. We've also got great funding opportunities. One of the nicest aspects of my, my work in FECTA is, is encouraging uh, you guys, my students, to, to get mobile, to consider uh, working, to consider studying in uh, another European country. And of course, it's great, you know, you've got these Erasmus grants, you've got scholarships to support you in doing so. So your generation students, you can be much more mobile than I was when I was a student 25 years ago. Final point, we've got great places for our research. We've got various networks where we can link in with other scholars who are also interested. We've got great journals such as this one, the European Journal of Social Work, to publish our findings in. So there's a whole bunch of reasons why this European comparative social work scene is particularly vibrant. Good, good. I mentioned just now there's exciting differences in social work in different countries. And that's a nice uh, point to think about. Why? Why? Why is social work in many European countries different in its form and in its methods today? How did social work get to be so diverse? Once again, natter with your partner, discuss with your partner, collect reasons for the differences. What did you come up with? You've probably got quite a long list. There really are a number of interesting reasons. 
Firstly, and most obviously, language, you know, looking across the border of France, say, you know, our discussions of social work take place in the German language, theirs are taking place in French, we're going to be developing our own ideas independently. And this leads to another interesting concept, the idea of academic discourses. As Germans, you might say, wissenschaftliche Diskurse, so the idea of scholarly discourses. What are our scholars writing about, thinking about, and it's about the same as elsewhere. To give a nice example, I happen to have a book on my desk right now. I'm thinking about social work history. I, I stumbled across this book in the library. And if you can read German, I guess that the title might well make sense to you. It's by Dollinger and it's called Die Pädagogik der Sozialen Frage. And I saw a title and I thought to myself, wow, you know, that, that's, that's a weird way of looking at the social question, the pedagogy of the social question. Completely natural in the German language. I'm not even sure if I can translate the title, the pedagogy of the social question. It doesn't have the same ring to it in the English language. In a, in a Brit who hadn't lived in Germany would struggle to get their head around that particular discourse or that particular concept. So our languages shape our own academic discourses which don't always stretch over borders. Religion, we've got religious diversity, you know you've got the Protestant and the Catholic churches uh, with quite distinct uh, ways of thinking about welfare and that will shape social work. You've got politics and you've got particular political coalitions uh, and particular forms of political consensus. You know, German politics very much politics of the centre, maybe the centre-right. You know, our Nordic friends would have their, their classic social democratic traditions with more centre-left politics. And that's going to shape differences in social work. You could size, um, you know, social work in Luxembourg is going to be different from social work in Germany, obviously because of the size. And also the administrative structures, you know, how centralised or how decentralised uh, are our countries. You know, so Germany has its federalism, for example, you know, the UK very centralised, you know, law for England and Wales made in London and made for, you know, two, two countries in their entirety together. So you've got quite different traditions in terms of how centralised or decentralized we are. Then of course you've got this fascinating question of national culture, national character, national values, uh, you know there's a certain way of thinking about things and it just seems right to think about this in one place and not in another. So you know for, for an example in the Nordic countries you know they have that culture of inclusion so it's a natural idea for them, it's a natural word for them to use, it's throughout their institutions you know from school onwards or from kindergarten onwards. You know, in Germany, we, we've got our own national uh, kind of values and things that we find good. We love the idea of integration in Germany. Going back to academic discourses, when I was a student in Germany, hearing the German language, I was always meeting that word integration, eingliederung, you know, this is a real concept in, in German social work law, for example. And I think that that's anchored culturally as well. You know, there's some things that we as cultures find good. Other examples, you know, in the Catholic countries, you often find family good, and that's something to be promoted. Good, good. We've got reasons for diversity, social history. You know, there's different social histories in Britain and Germany, and you can, you can read these lovely rich accounts and understand cultural differences that have come from that social history, but have then shaped our social policy and our social work. It goes without saying, these points I've listed here are all very interrelated. I'm going to flip my question over. We've been considering differences. Let's do the opposite thing. Let's consider why things are the same, if not all over Europe, but in certainly in large chunks of Europe. What factors have helped make social work in European countries somewhat similar? Again, matter with your neighbour. Think what you can come up with. Yeah, what did you and your partner list? There's a whole bunch of reasons that immediately came to my mind. It goes without saying, although I've celebrated different languages, we have common languages. You know, our, our Austrian friends can read our German books and vice versa, and presumably half our, our Swiss friends. You know, or you've got, you know, people in Belgium reading French social work literature. Moreover, we can often read the literature of our neighbouring countries. So if I'm, I'm in Portugal, I'm guessing I can read papers by my Spanish uh, peers as well. You know, so we have certainly linguistic possibilities even within our linguistic diversity. And of course, English as a common second language, lingua franca, for the scientific community. 
shared high living standards. You know, we've got, we've got our, our wealth. You know, Europe is a rich part of the world. Um, and in particular, that manif manifests itself in our welfare states. You know, we, we put a lot of money aside for our welfare, for our social protection. Again, another core European value. We like to look after ourselves. We like to protect ourselves. Although we have political diversity, there are certain European political traditions, again, maybe uh, shaped around bits of Europe rather than the whole thing. But certainly if you look at, say, you know, central European states, we used to talk about Rhineland capitalism in the 20th century, noting how this economic social model, you know, of many of the countries along the Rhine, um, you know, has, has parallels. Um, and again, you know, you, you can see that, I've already mentioned, but, you know, kind of centre-right, political traditions, political consensus in so many uh, continental European countries. And again, the Nordic people with their own kind of common political traditions. Professional mobility. Um, as students, you can be mobile. Lecturers are mobile. You might have guest lecturers from your neighbouring European country or another European country coming in one week to talk about some topic or another. And again, that, that would influence students to think European. We've got exchange programs. We've got conferences. You know, our conference scene is wonderful. I can easily hop over to Holland for a social work conference. You know, so we're, we're quite mobile and we're used to dealing with, with, with scholars from our neighbouring European countries. And finally, uh, although we do have distinct histories, there's overlaps in our social history. You know, going back to my social question, think about industrialization in Germany in, say, Bismarck's time. You know, but you had the same industrial working class communities in Belgium, in the north of France. You know, so there's great parallels there. And again, think about our culture, think about our social institutions, such as the church, you know, binding social policy and social work development together. One, one final thing I want to talk about before I come to a close. I gave you those four book covers, books which I'm quite passionate about. Two of them happen to be by the same author, actually, a guy called Walter Lorenz. And he really is worth talking about briefly because he is so well cited. If you go to Britain or Ireland, to two places where he's lived and worked, um, a, lot of, a lot of people you meet will know his ideas. And he, books that he wrote 25 years ago are still cited today. So for me, he's definitely the key European social work author. And isn't it nice that he happens to be German born? Two books which I'll draw your attention to. One is much older, actually, it's just 25 years old, uh, but still very readable today. Lorenz is looking at social work in its cultural context, relating it to a country's history, looking at the role of social work in the, the, the wider project of welfare states, which in turn is part of the project of building a nation state itself. A really, really readable book. And a kind of successor to, to it, published something like 12 years later, is uh, Perspectives on European Social Work. And I, I find it particularly interesting because of the first chapter where Lorenz has a kind of theoretical framework um, for comparing social work uh, in a European comparison. Um, and I find it really, really quite stimulating. Of course, I'm jealous, so I love, I love all that theoretical stuff. Great. If you, if you don't want to read a book in English, both of those Lorenz texts are, are, are actually penned in English. If you want to read a German introduction, my favourite one is this one from Peter Hidat here in Syrian down there. And you can see my copy here, it's all these lovely yellow post-it notes. Um, each time Hidat was noting something that I hadn't thought of before, I stuck a little yellow post-it note in. And I've got some like 30 or 35 post-it notes in here. That's way too many. But I, I like it when a book gives me lots of new perspectives. Hey, hope you've enjoyed this talk. I shall come to a close now. Thanks for your interest.